But given Trump's popularity on the right, will anything that the panel finds make a difference? Is this just for posterity? Or is there any sense that it would move the needle in the present? Let's ask a man who knows the strategy of running a Republican presidential campaign, Stuart Stevens. It's good to have you. Good to see you, Chris. So give me your general take on this situation and what matters. Look, I think you're right. It's not going to make a difference with the Republican Party. The Republican Party has become a Trump party. It's a white grievance party. It's, it's very comfortable being what it is. Nobody made the Republican Party feel the way they're doing, act the way they're doing, back Donald Trump. They're doing it because they want to do it. And sometimes, you know, I think we, we lose sight of that. We talk about how Trump, like, hijacked the party. None of that went on. Trump is the most dominant figure in the Republican Party. And what this is about, I think, is, is not a search for posterity. I think it's a, a search for the truth to help preserve democracy. Because really, you know, as much as I find it difficult to say this, because I've spent 30 years pointing out flaws in the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is really the pro-democracy party in America now, and Republicans have become an autocratic party that is basically anti-democratic. You know, I um, was talking to some good friends who are, uh, consider themselves, you know, not Republicans right now, but they're conservatives and they've only been in that party. Right. You know, they said, look, it's bad enough that they won't work on any of these popular policies that are in the spending bill uh, when they're so popular and so important to uh, red states and red counties and blue states. Um, but now this big lie thing, they don't even understand it because they look at the names and faces and think they knew these people. And whether they're silent or talking out there, you know what, about things they know aren't true, they can't understand how these men and women think it's worth it. What is your, in what is your insight into that as an insider? You know, I asked myself that question after 2016, and it led me to write this book. It was all a lie. Um, I'll, I'll say one thing. I'll never question how 1930s Germany happened again. And I'm with your friends. I look at these people. I thought I knew them. A lot of them I worked with. A lot of them I helped elect. And I know that this isn't who I thought they were, but you are what you do. You ultimately believe in what you will fight for. And when you don't fight for democracy, it's hard to say you believe in democracy. And what kills me, Chris, is, you know, these are the, the legacy of the greatest generation. I mean, people like my dad, who was just so common, I was three years in the South Pacific, 28 island landings. They came back, they passed off this great democratic legacy. And these people can't even get their comm shop to put out a statement saying who won the presidential race. I mean, they're not being asked to charge a machine gun nest, take a beach. It's a pretty low level of commitment, and yet they failed. And it's, it's shocking and depressing, but it's a reality. Where does it lead us? You know, I don't think we know. I, I, I think that if you look at how modern democracies fade, they fade not in coups usually. It's not like a end day in Chile. Uh, it's like Hungary. They, they fade at the, box, at the uh, ballot box and in, in the courtroom. And... I don't think we know how this is going to end. But I tell you this, one thing I do know, I know a lot of these people these, these, that are now autocratic forces, they think they are going to win. They're very confident. They're very patient. There are a lot of buffoonish figures out there like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Matt Getz. But the people that are really at the core of this are not buffoons. They're serious people who want to take America to a very different place than it is now. They don't like the way America is changing. They don't like the fact that one out of 10 uh, of the new Americans in this current census is white. They don't like the fact that if you're 15 years and under, majority of Americans are non-white. And ultimately, I think this is about race, and it is about a shrinking white power structure that is desperate to maintain power. And we don't know how it's going to work out. I think if Donald Trump gets elected president again in uh, 2024, which certainly could happen, It'll be the last election that we would recognize as anything that we've known. You know, we've always been asking the question. I got to go, but I want to keep talking to you about this, Stuart, because, you know, I mean, look, I've been studying what you've been doing uh, for decades. But the um, and people should read it was all a lie, uh, by the way. It, it is a really good digest of understanding past and present. I've always thought about this in terms of I wonder who will change this. I wonder what will change this. I now believe there's as good a chance that the real poisonous part of your party 
just becomes more obvious with the, what this is about and starts saying what you're saying now uh, and saying it with bravado, uh, like Steve King, we need more white babies. There's, I think, just as good a chance it goes that way than that we get to a better place of being more inclusive. I want to keep talking to you. I can't tonight. I hope you have a good weekend, and I hope you come back soon. Stuart Stevens. Thank you. The book is called It Was All a Lie.